rectifier we came across a problem what is that uh, like a fluctuations no that and that fluctuations are due to what uh, like the output what happen when we check the output even with filter even with filter we had some fluctuations here okay for to avoid this fluctuations what we are, what we did is like we we went for very large value of rl no if rl is very large it will smooth out what is rl rl is equipment to so can we change resistance of mobile that will be a little bit more difficult here because uh, the, the rl is something depends on the application means like a equipment for which you are supplying this regulated voltage for which you are supplying this voltage so you can't change rl rl is something should be fixed here so therefore now rl is having some limitations let us say that one so but what is our requirement a constant voltage but what we what we obtain we obtain voltage of like this so let me try any other device which will help us to make this horizontal to make it smooth to minimize this fluctuations this fluctuations which are there no so it should the voltage should be of like this but what we obtain is of this kind so let's search for any equipment which will help us or any device so i am i am coming for zener diode let's first study that zener diode characteristics everything then we'll bring to the our concern like our concern is of this one okay this is a background today's and next we'll go for application problems after this Okay, I'll begin the class. So first, uh, it's a Zener diode. It's a specially designed diode which is used in reverse bias. It is specially designed. Ordinary diode, I will not, I cannot use in the reverse bias. Any reason? It will burn out. Ordinary diode will burn out. So whereas specially designed. So what changes we make? I'll go for highly doping. The P type and N type will be highly doped, or more popular, N type will be heavily doped here. Okay, let's not bother that much here. <coughs> so P type and N type are heavily doped. So what is the Zener diode or diode difference? Zener diode is what about ordinary diode? This will be lightly doped. Depending upon applications, in general, I'm I am saying that one. It's heavily doped here. So then what happened and what about ordinary diode if you operate at breakdown it will burn out huh? ordinary diode if they are operated a breakdown region they'll burn out what about zener diode it is specially designed such that at breakdown only i'll operate and will not burn out for that open i'll take care about the material got this okay now the reverse bias characteristic what do you mean a reverse bias the negative terminal connected to p type and positive terminal connected to n type okay let's i think uh, already we have some idea about the reverse bias can you remember <coughs> okay let's see that one uh, as i increase the reverse bias the most energetic electron are, are able to cross similarly what when the most energetic hole will cross like this and this is what the diffusion current Next again, uh, there's a minority carrier. By chance, what happened? This minority carrier, due to thermal agitation, this all is a minority carrier. Will I agree? So we have. And that straight line, I'll erase it. Okay, there's a thing. Uh, now let's come for the minority carrier. There's a this uh, all there's a whole minority carrier. So then then what will happen because of uh, like a thermal agitation by chance if it comes here, so it will the the what this depletion layer will do will will push it towards the p type. No, similarly the electron by chance if it enters the depletion layer will push it towards right. So how do they move? So it will be. Ranjit Reddy, switch off video. Ranjit Reddy, switch off video. Okay. 
will move like this and this will be the reverse bias once again i'm explaining it this is what happens so this is what the drift current so what is the direction of drift current the direction of drift current is now in the reverse bias what actually happens which current will be more and, and uh, uh, along with this there'll be breaking up of coolant bond will occur due to that I'll, I'll put it okay this also let it put a minority carrier current Okay, now now come for this. So like, like this, the moment of carriers will occur. As they increase reverse bias, the width of depletion layer increases. We we have everything explanation. Huh? I'll not go for in detail again. The width of depletion increases. As the width of depletion increases, the E will increase. Then what happened to the number of majority carriers crossing the junction? Their number will decrease. So the diffusion current will decrease. As they increase the width of depletion layer, then the number of covalent bonds in this region. the breaking up of number of covalent bonds will increase because more number of charged layer will come more covalent bonds will come into picture more covalent bonds will break up and more minority carriers either it is generated here or here you see that's why i shown both the minority carriers which are generated here immediately what happen they'll be pushed to the whole generated either in this region or positive charge or negative charge will be pushed towards left the electron which is generated here either in this region or this region will be pushed towards right so this is similar to like minority carrier no similar to minority carrier so don't call this a majority carrier the minority carriers generated in depletion layer so open will contribute for the drift current you can see that so who will contribute for drift current some holes the moment of holes from n to p type the minority carriers which are moving from n to p type or p trend type is it there is a minority carrier even this also minority carrier along with that what happened minority carriers generate in depletion layer are you getting now there are two reasons are that minority carrier current wall will come the walls when they move from n to p type and how the electrons when they move from p to n type because they are minority carrier along with that the minority carriers generated in the depletion layer they will reserve drift current so as they increase the reverse bias definitely what will happen to more covalent bonds will break up as the more covalent bonds will break up more minority carriers generated so the drift current will be greater than diffusion current i think this is what what we had earlier discussion as they keep on increase reverse bias the drift current will increase the diffusion current will decrease here then suddenly at <coughs> one instant or at one particular reverse voltage there there is a reverse voltage at one reverse voltage the electrostatic field in the depletion layer is such that it will be very high such that it will directly pull valence electron from the valence band no, not here here in this region it will directly pull valence electron from valence band then what do we get or it will break up one covalent bond better say then what do we get two holes two electrons this is called a zener effect then another thing these minority carriers that are generated due to thermal agitation will happen this electron or pen it get accelerated due to electrostatic field as as it gets accelerated it will when it encounters a covalent bond what it does it will generate if it is having sufficient energy it will break up that covalent bond it will generate four minority carriers again that minority carrier generated like that avalanche breakdown will occur so if you can recollect some small i think just let me put the diagram i'll proceed so that it will be easy for you now what is the avalanche breakdown the avalanche breakdown is like this no in avalanche breakdown uh, th this is in the depletion layer uh, not, not outside the depletion layer due to covalent bond so this this electron will get accelerated it will go in break this will will go in break in turn this all all also will move i'm not showing the all only electron i'm showing it both all and electron uh, all all will give energy to that minority carrier generated this electrostatic field 
Okay, I agree this. This avalanche breakdown. What about the Zener breakdown? In Zener breakdown, directly the electrostatic field. If you can remember, I think I gave. It will directly pull. Uh, from, who will pull this valence electron? Directly this electrostatic field. Directly from valence band, it will pull the valence electrons, valence electron from valence band to conduction band. We'll get two holes, two electrons. So like this, sort of millions of coolant from millions of coolant bond, the electric static field will pull. So I think these two phenomena are different. So these two are what responsible for large current. Okay, now, now we are interested at that breakdown only, not, not at any other point, at breakdown only I'm interested. So if I go for the graph, A small slope we have to show it <laughs> and there's a forward bias forward bias will be similar to now what is the knee voltage will be one volt there's a breakdown breakdown here very specifically I'll call VZ this is IR no Till here, uh, where the breakdown occurs after this, huh? suddenly what happens as they keep on increase reverse bias, the width of depletion layer increases, then as the width of depletion layer increases, more coalent bonds will break up, more minority carriers generated and the reverse current will keep on increase or the drift current will increase. And almost at this point, the diffusion current is negligible. Here what happens, both the diffusion, drift will, be there, drift will be more than the diffusion. So what should be the direction of this <coughs> current? In the direction of the drift, we have to show it, no? Shall we call this as IR? More specifically, I'll call IZ. Just call it IZ. Instead of IR, I'll call this IZ that one. Still, let me call VR only. Breakdown voltage, I'll call VZ. The current flowing through the Zener dead, I'll call IZ here. <coughs> so I'm not bothered much about this. Huh? As a breakdown occurs, then it will not burn out. The metal is so designed that it can cope up that heat that large amount of heat what is generated no so will be cope up so how do how do large amount of heat I'll cope up the Zener breakdown instead of 24 volt no I'll adjust it around 5 or 10 volt suppose say even Zener breakdown occurs at 50 volt what I do I will go for the heat dissipation what are the heat generated weapon if I may if the metal is able to cope up the diode will be safe ordinary diode will burn out here Zener diode is operated here only okay fine what what we achieved from here okay look at this particular curve I'll magnify only the curve because that is the major part of the discussion here. For small change in voltage, I'll change the curve a little bit. Some slope will bring it. you extend further so you, you see this so what is this some triangle i do then then what is this delta v let me call and this is delta i what is this delta v will be of order 0 0.001 volt what about delta i this i'll get of order say 20 milliampere what is this graph for small change in voltage a large change in current shall we put in uh, either way though current changes by large amount still the voltage across it constant Then, then if I take slope, so what do this slope? Reciprocal of slope, <coughs> slope, 
slope is what delta i by delta v then the zener resistance called as rz So what is the resistance offered by the material to the flow of current? The Zener diode in the reverse bias. That's what the Zener resistance, what we call it. Okay, now look at this. Even the current changes by large amount, total up into voltage will not change. Oh, sir, what is there? Even resistor also will do. Okay, let's see the resistor, how the, how the curve will be. High versus V or V versus I, anything you can, you can take it, this one. No. So as voltage changes, the current will also change. Proportional, no? V proportional to I, delta V is equal to delta V is proportional to delta I, but here it's not like that. For large change in current, small change in voltage. <coughs> uh, sorry, even forward bias also is there. But what is the maximum new voltage I'll get it? One volt only, I can't change much. Zener died one volt. Silicon, 0.7. For germanium, what is the forward voltage? Will be 0.4 volt. But here, what I can adjust this VZ also. Where the breakdown occurs, I can adjust by doping levels. And what is the advantage? For large change in current, small change in voltage. Large change in current, small change in voltage. I think this is the thing what I'm going to use in application. Voltage regulator. So what is the Zener diode? No, though current across it increases, but it will see that voltage constant. See, this this is a, almost as a constant. So what is this equipment? No, the device is such that though current across it increases, it will see that voltage will be constant. This is what application I'll use for as voltage regulator. So if I use it here, it's of no use much because what is the maximum voltage I can have? One volt, but here what happened? I can 10 volt, 5 volt, 20 volt, 100 volt, 80 volt, 60 volt, any, anything that one. Usually maximum applications will be around less than 100, most of the things. So the breakdown this VZ depends on what? Depends on doping levels. Okay, clear this. VZ or breakdown voltage, both are same here. So th this is the one uh, thing what happened. So what is the graph? What is the use of, what is the conclusion of graph? So at breakdown, if the current across the Zener diode increases, but the voltage across it remains constant. So from the graph, what I observed, at breakdown region, the voltage drop across the Zener diode remains constant though current increases better say we don't go for or current varies large amount means of order milliampere current changes by large amount though current increases it will maintain voltage constant this is what i'm going to use for voltage regulator what all we discussed i'll put it Everything. Okay, this is what the discussion is. Okay, that avalanche breakdown, Zener breakdown, I think everything is having firm idea. Let's directly get into the application part. So I'll now I'll go for the rectifier. So the what is the difficulty we face with the re re rectifier? The output voltage was fluctuating. No? The output voltage is fluctuating. <coughs> so how to make it, how to minimize that fluctuation? So for that purpose, I'll bring the Zener diode into the picture. So what is a basically circuit will be? So let's get into the 